check out Paddy's new VIPP club. Get a £10 free bet every week when you place five bets of £10 or more. Max £10 bonus per person per week. Excludes shops. Selected odds. Conditions and exclusions apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Racing Post Greyhound Derby postcast. I'm Dave Clark of the Racing Post, joined in the studio by colleague Phil Donaldson. We've also got two special guests on the line, Irish expert and uh, all things Irish. We'll be uh, filling us in with the encyclopedia of Irish racing, Mr Ian Fortune. And we've also got Ryan Rossborough on the line. It's good to hear from you, Ian. Hope you're well, Ryan. Hope you're well and uh, hopefully you're set for a busy and a very unfortunate next month or so in terms of the derby. I'll start with you, Ryan. Um, same derby format, different venue, different trip as a layer. How are you approaching this? Think you can get a result or two? We definitely think we can get a result or two, Dave, to be honest. Now, our opinion would be that a strong running dog would definitely be preferred over the short runners and the early pacers. We'd definitely be of the idea that track should see inside runners, but look... There's going to be carnage on the inside in the first round or two. Like, and the valley's definitely going to lie with the wide seeds, particularly in the heats. OK, we shall see. We'll set the scene a little bit, Phil. 191 yep. going to traps as it stands. Um, we're keeping the same format. Three runs in a week, which will be the third round, quarterfinal and semi-final. We're switching from Wimbledon to Toaster. What kind of profile of dog should the punters be looking for? That's a good question, Dave. Um, I think Wimbledon, we all sort of look towards the early pace, although some exceptional strong running greyhounds won the derby. Um, this time round, yeah, I think Ryan uh, raises a very valid point. I'm looking for a bit of uh, metal in my selections to a certain degree. Uh, I think um, certainly the first round will be stacked in favour of the wide seeds. Uh, and I'm quite keen to, to, to pick on the uh, the uh, stronger runners. I think as the competition settles down, these dogs get more used to the track. I think the form will begin to hold up. I think certainly first round, uh, I think the trial form and, and how greyhounds have been going round will be absolutely key. certain amount of irony in that the, the stigma with Toaster is that you can't win out wide. And um, <laughs> two of us have already flagged up sort of wides in the first round, mm. but we'll see how we go. Ian, obviously unfortunate um, ongoings at... Dublin in Dublin at the moment but you know we're blessed with such a tremendous Irish challenge this year yeah and when you think about it 191 in the half it's sort of lucky you did get the Irish contingent I think a lot of the, um, the real raw early pacers that won't get the trip have not gone to Toaster whereas you would have had all those dogs at Wimbledon and as a result a lower number but I think it's a perfect number I think 191 192 would have been is perfect because the three qualify, and we're just straight into the action. It's great three to qualify. It's, it's, it's perfect from the start. Now, I know you've been over here, Ian. Um, you've been to Toaster as well. What do you make of the place? Um, I, I think it's going to be an incredible occasion final night. I think it's the perfect venue for a party, for a, for a, a night that the sport will will savour in terms of uh, celebration and whatnot. I think it's a fantastic spot. I think they're going to go all out and... To be honest, it, the place is pristine. You know, it wasn't a blade of grass out of the place when I was there. And the track itself is obviously a little bit quirky, but I think we'll settle into it. I think we'll get used to it, and I think the English Derby will have a, a home there for quite some time to come. And um, what's your thoughts on the the profile of dog quickly um, that the punter should be looking out for at this stage? Yeah, similar to the lads. I, I think you need a strong run greyhound. Yeah. Phil described it there, you need a dog with a bit of metal. Uh, that's purely because of the six runs and those three quick ones, qu uh, quick runs, quarterfinal, semi-final, final, or, uh, yeah, the quarterfinals. Th th which is obviously week. different to the Irish derby, which is, you know, run one run a week. How do the Irish perceive that? Is it speed and stamina, the, the type of dog that they need to bring over? Yeah, well, to be honest, you're looking at any any derby, you need speed and stamina. It, it, we, just, we just see it as it, it sort of rids the... It rids the one or two that are basically just come as the end of their tether. Um, and it can catch a dog out that's perhaps not recovering as quick as possible. And, you know, I suppose it's a good thing. It's something we're used to in English Derby. Obviously, it's not ideal for us over in Ireland, but, you know, it's for, certainly if dogs were travelling. But at that stage, you'd, you'd fancy that if there was any Irish dogs over there, they'd be staying over there at that point. OK, right, let's talk some betting. Ryan, do you want to give us a quick show, maybe the, the first eight, nine, ten in the betting? Yeah, first in the bat, but at the minute we have Clare's Rocket, 12 to 1. Now, look, Clare's Rocket has been very popular over the last few days and even over the last few months. He's seen as Ireland's leading late. We respect that. Uh, Price is Brandy Knacks in the bat, and look, very, very quirky dog, but very, very fast. Punters have been absolutely flying into this dog recently. 
Uh, and look, if he turns up a better dog than he was last year, I think it was in the Irish St. Ledger that he won basically, basically pulling the cart. If he turns out to be any way better than that form last year, he has a serious, serious chance. 16 to 1 he is. OK, and then sort of give us the next handful of prices down the list. Yeah, we have uh, Bubbly Bluebird, 16 to 1, also known as the P45. Um, <laughs> Droopy's Buick, 16 to 1. George, or sorry, Dorota's Wildcat, 20s, and Dorota's Woohoo, 25. OK, Ian, uh, best place to start, I suppose, with, with the Rocket. Um, we know he's a superstar, arguably the fastest greyhound on the planet, but uh, not quite worked out for him, beaten in two trial stakes so far. No, not as yet, but um, you've got to consider he's only had a handful of races since basically since last July. He actually His last victory was last July in the final of the Champions Stakes. He was beaten the first round of the Derby, got injured at, at Shelburne Park, then was beaten Night of Stars, and he's only had those two races this year. So, to be honest, you can't really judge him on what we've seen thus far. I'm sure the dog will improve plenty, and he's probably a dog that's in need of a confidence-boosting run. But, you know, you'd imagine that's going to come in the first or second round. Once he starts hitting the lids, Trust me, you'll see a different greyhound. This is an absolute machine. The problem is, it's been so long since we saw his very best that people are starting to doubt him. But don't doubt him. He's a young dog with little mileage on the clock and it'll come right. I have no doubt about that. Phil, let's, let's talk the home team. Yes. As it were, looking down the list, Bubbly Bluebird, Droopy's Buick leading the, the UK trained charge. Mm. What do we make of those? Well, <clears throat> obviously two, two exceptional greyhounds. They, they dominated the headlines last year. Um, they, they've both shown glimpses of, of, of that ability again. Well, Buick more so because of he's had more racing this year. Um, perhaps a little bit unlucky two years in a, in a row to make the Scottish Derby final, breaking the track record in the process, getting beaten in the final. But I think uh, I think Tony Bullen in, in the racing post earlier this week in his price wise, he put him up as his sort of shorter price pick of, of the competition. And I tend to side with uh, Tony because I think he is just the ultimate competition dog. He's very, very hard to get knocked out. Could he be draw-dependent, though, at Toast? No, he's been running the track very tight to the inside. Possibly so, but I think he's got... I wouldn't say it's a gimme in the first round, but he's got quite a soft heat. I think I, I see him clearing the dogs on his inside in the first round. Uh, you're going to see quite a few of these Raiders get eliminated in the heats uh, as you get down to the 96. Uh, yes, he, he, he wants a draw, uh, as most Raiders do, but he can handle a tricky draw. Uh, mm. As for um, Bluebird... Yeah, he he's obviously was the heir apparent last year. He looked like he was going to be the greyhound to, to push Buick all the way, and he did for, for greyhound of the year. Uh, he's frighteningly fast. Uh, again, he's, he's come into the competition maybe just slightly undercooked because he had a niggle, uh, which ruled him out of Shawfield. But if uh, if Paul Young and his team have got him firing, then... He's knocking on the door, Young. He's finalist, 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 runners yeah. up. He's knocking on the door. He is an exceptionally fast. They, they are two incredibly good greyhounds. And what did you make of the, the litter mates, um, Dorota's Wildcat and Dorota's Woohoo, who we should mention is the shortest price wide seed? Yes, yeah, Dorota's Woohoo, of course, uh, triumphed up at uh, Shawfield for, for Charlie and the team. It's it's a fantastic litter, isn't it? Unbelievably talented litter. Um, yeah, you know, I, I actually of the litter. If I, if you were giving me one to pick for the competition, I probably would would go outside of that peg. I thought Forrest Con was a little bit uh, overpriced at at sixty six, and I have nibbled him. But it would be no surprise at all. I know Labrooks. I think it was Labrooks. So some uh, there was a quote of around seven to one that litter to win the Derby this year. Uh, and it's not impossible, without any shadow of doubt. They've got several real live runners, and yet wouldn't rule any out. And Kevin Hutton's already said to Rote as well, OK, he wouldn't swap it for any other dog in the competition. OK, Ryan, you are our man behind enemy lines. Let's talk about liabilities, your outright book. Uh, you mentioned Bubbly Bluebird, the, the P45. The P45, yeah. Listen, they've been packing this dog from 66 and 50s. Now, we stuck our knack out at the time. We were of the idea that he was a young dog. There was a whole load of commotion about him. Um, to be honest, we didn't really believe. All the damage was done at 66 and 55. 50s each way, 100s each way. You know, it just was constant for about four or five months. Now, all of a sudden, we find ourselves in the realms of 16 to 1. But again, at 16 to 1, we genuinely believe this dog is underpriced. We genuinely believe that liabilities are driving the price across the industry. And for anybody who's looking for perspective punt on Bubbly Boo Bird, I would see, see, give serious thought to uh, having a look at Paddy Parr's prices tomorrow morning. So you're, you're quoting uh, 16 to 1. Aside from the liability, what price would you like to have him in at, Ryan? Personally, myself? Yeah. Uh, look, I would have been thinking definitely somewhere along the lines of a 25 to 1 shot, 33 to 1 shot. Just on what I've seen recently, I think he's too draw dependent. I think there's question marks about his stamina. 
particularly in the last 75 to 100 yards. And even at that, like, he doesn't seem to me to be the most confident type of dog. Uh, and certainly, you know, there's a couple of instances there where he just shies away from certain things. Uh, he just wouldn't be for me the type of dog that he is, particularly in the level that he's at now. Some damning words there from Paddy Powers, uh, Ryan Rossborough, and uh, those in the Champagne Club, I'm sure, will be hoping that you will be down that job centre in about a month's time, Ryan. But let's talk about liabilities, big big bets. I mean, mentioned, you mentioned Bubbly Bluebird being a big loser. Have you taken any chunks on anything? Yeah, look, well, between two different customers in the recent few days, we had Droopy's Buick with a four grand of 20s. Um, which was a big enough bet. Going going back further than that, we have laid uh, high about 300 each way at 100s. Now, this is going back six months ago. Uh, since that, then, we've got JT debt, 300 each way at 66. The Bluebird Dog, 250 each way at 66. Uh, Price of Brandy, 300 each way at 33s. Dodging a few bullets there, <coughs> Ryan. And obviously, each way terms, first six home you draw. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, one dog we did want to keep was the Droopy's Buick dog. At the time when we were sort of discussing English Derby prices, um, Buick was knocking it around to 66 to 1 with some firms. Um, be a big winner in our book despite laying them recent bets. Okay, good stuff there. Right, I did see one firm, Phil, uh, we're going first four home uh, each way terms for some time. If you ever see mm. that, avoid that avoid like that. the plague. Um, absolutely criminal. Imagine getting one to the final and not drawing. That would oh. be just frightening. Right, we're going to head for a... a <laughs> we're going to head for a quick break <laughs> and, uh, and then we're going to look at the Irish Challenge with Mr Fortune. Check out Paddy's new VIPP club. Get a £10 free bet every week when you place five bets of £10 or more. Max £10 bonus per person per week. Excludes shops. Selected odds. Conditions and exclusions apply. 18 plus. BeCumbleware.org. Welcome back to the Racing Post Greyhound Derby postcast. We've got Ian Fortune on the line, um, our Irish expert. And as we've already mentioned, a big Irish challenge over him. We've touched on Claire's Rocket Prices Brandy at the head of the market. Um, what about a certain JT Jet, the defending champion? Yeah, obviously a very fast greyhound. Obviously a defending champion. He's won the Easter Cup in Ireland already uh, in his in his day, and then of course won last year's English Derby. He's an exceptionally fast dog, but the question is, how is he going to handle the track? You know, the wide seat issue hasn't been dead and buried yet, and unfortunately, JT Jet is one of those wide seats that tends to stay wide rather than cutting in when he gets the chance, uh, unless he's clear of dogs. And to be honest, he's probably not going to be clear of dogs too often, and um, he's going to have to be doing it from maybe third and fourth place most nights, but. He has the pace to do that. My fear with him is he's in the red-hot first-round heat and he definitely improves through competitions. He's a dog that needs a lot of work, I think. Uh, if you actually look at all his, his competition performances over the years, he's, he's got better as each competition has gone on. And I think he's a dog that we won't see the best of him for probably another three runs. And that could be a worry, especially in the heat he's in in the first round. So you're saying if he's got dogs up his inside at the uh, first bend, he might steer right into the, the fields of Northamptonshire? Not so much steer right, but he'll certainly stay, he'll certainly stay wide um, and, and may, may edge off slightly wider than he has to, to avoid dogs. At the same time, if he avoids trouble, he's such an engine and such pace that you know, I wouldn't be concerned about his age or anything like that. This dog is lightly raced, and Paul Hennessy has always said he's a derby dog. Granted, he won an Easter Cup in the past, but that's basically all he's ever run him in. Yeah, this is this be his fifth derby. It's easy to forget. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he's, of course, he he, he ran in the English Derby as a raw pup out, out just out of the unraced stake from Inniscorthy, and was like very unlucky, very unlucky not to progress further than he did. Um, he's beaten, I think it was like a length into fourth behind the winner. Never mind behind the third dog. Okay, right. Well, it would be uh, foolish not to mention the the track record holder. Even though I do think that clock's going to go once or twice during this. Derby drive on tip. Tell us a little bit about this fella. Yeah, nice dog. He was a nice young dog last year. Um, you know, you'd have said to yourself he was a nice sort of a dog, a laurels type dog, but he seems to have strengthened up. Um, he's getting better and better. And to be honest, he's probably stepped up again since he's gone to England. He really seems to like the place. Um, he's not as fast as some early, but he's enough early speed to always be there, thereabouts on the corner. And the way he's running down the back and staying on would suggest that he's capable of going far. Again, he's probably producing his best form in toaster compared to what he's done in Ireland. But he's just probably a dog that's come into his own. And Graham Holland obviously has him well and fresh. And I, I certainly wouldn't completely dismiss him, although he wouldn't be in my top five for the competition. OK, and just pick out one or two others for us. We've got the, the likes of Tyra Shea, Sab Miller, Gary Vo Bobby, Sonic, who was the Irish Derby finalist last year. Anything else catch the eye? Yeah, we have to very fast greyhounds there, but... Um, 
the ones I, I'd continue with would be the likes of um, Claire's Rockers and Prices Brandy um, are obviously the two big two. Um, College College Paradise is a greyhound I have, well, had a few quid on at 66 one. I think he's a massive price. He's a dog with loads of pace power and a uh, bit of a kinky individual, but if you happen to get on the fence early against any dog, he's going to be very hard to beat. I think he'll go very far in the derby. There you go, the fortune millions are on College hmm. Paradise. Right, let's get the first round naps. This will not be beaten. First round naps. Phil Donaldson, you have the honour. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, well, my nap uh, goes on the first night um, on uh, uh, live on RPG TV, of course, the action. It's Heat 10, last heat of the night. Uh, King Kid for Liz McNair and the KSS Syndicate team. Uh, I just think he is a good thing, Dave. Um, I watched his last trial against Paradise Marco and he showed all sorts of speed down the far side. Um, big improvement on his previous uh, effort round there. 29.03 calculated. I fear, obviously, Paul Hennessy's greyhound, uh, JT Yankee, they're getting to grips with the track, his limited experience, but the clock tells me that King Kid uh, could easily win the early battle. He's the only seed in the race, a uh, wide seed, I should say, uh, and I think uh, I don't think anything else in that race at the moment is going to get in there 29 seconds. Ian, your uh, best bet of the first round, please. Uh, Gary's old Bobby for me, and he's Drupy's awesome on his inside. He's not a dog that's blessed with early speed. I hope Gary's old Bobby from Trap 2 is probably ideal. Get racing early, and I thought once he got to the front, he'd be very hard to pick up. He's a dog that's proved no end this year, so yeah, he's for me. And he's early, he's in P2, I think, on Thursday night. He is indeed. And, and Ryan, I think you're quite sweet on that one as well. Yeah, I am, Dave. Great minds think alike there, Mr. Fortune. Yeah, Gary Vaux, Bobby, I just thought he'd lead up. Uh, the Droopy's awesome dog seems very short to me for a dog that hasn't won, I don't know, since Bill Clinton was present or something. <laughs> um, Three looks average enough. Four dog looks, well, in my opinion, will be murdered by five in the run-up. Like that drove his dog needs inside badly. Uh, and six it wouldn't be down about either. Look, yeah, so I think uh, anything odds against and Gary Bobby would definitely be seen as a good bet. Right, I'm going to uh, stick with Thursday as well. All four of us going mm-hmm. Thursday night, 9.48, heat nine for me. Liz McNair's Diego flight has been staying on ever so well. I think Mark Wallace is... Mingler's Torre can uh, cut out the running, but a little bit vulnerable close home there. And uh, Diego Flight, who uh, St. Ledger finalist, can swoop late there. Do you want to give us a couple of prices there, Ryan? I know yeah, you priced up there first. The price. Yeah, yeah. So the Heat 10, um, Phil's, Phil's Nap, King Kid, uh, 11 to 10. We also have the Gary Vaux Bobby Dog price there. Um, obviously, given my views on it and Ian's views on it, we're odds on, we're actually 10 to 11. Uh, and yourself, Dave, uh, which was Diego Flight. 11 to 4. 11 to 4, lovely. Right, we're going to head for a quick break and then uh, tackle all the Paddy Power specials. Check out Paddy's new VIPP club. Get a £10 free bet every week when you place five bets of £10 or more. Max £10 bonus per person per week. Excludes shops. Selected odds. Conditions and exclusions apply. 18 plus. Becumberware.org. Well, very well, welcome back to the Racing Post. Greyhound Derby postcast. Dave Clark here, joined by colleague Phil Donaldson. On the line, we've got Ian Fortune. And from Paddy Power, we've got Ryan Rosper and uh, Ryan, you've got pl- plenty of uh, specials for this year's Greyhound Derby. First of all, um, the old rivalry, the UK versus Ireland. How do you see that and uh, what are the price is? Yeah, well, look, th- this market's a funny market every year, and I'll tell you why. There's only one There's only one side of the bet that we lay every year, and that's Ireland. Like, you nearly think it's a patriotic rate for Irish people to come and back it with us. Like, But you've got to give the punters what they want. We're 11 to 8 standout based across the industry. Top price there, 11 to 8. Now, another one interesting, I've got quite a few firms are doing this one. No doubt the track record's going to tumble at some point, probably a number of times during the competition. I know that you've priced up what you think the, the fastest time will be during rec- uh, recorded during the whole derby. Yeah, look, we've we basically went through a couple of different markets or a couple of different selections in the market. Now, Mark Wallace was, I quote me if I'm wrong here, but he, was men- he did mention saying that... Um, he had Bruiser's Bullet that would go faster than 2870. Um, look, if, if that's the case, like 8 to 1 could be massive or 2864 less because if you're talking in them sort of realms, then yeah, like, but I, personally, I can't see it. My gut feeling was the 2880 to 2894 market at even money. And even at that, I still think that's a good bet. Feel the clock, if I remember rightly, is 2904. 04 at the moment. How, do, yeah. how much do we see being shaved off of it? Uh, well, I think we, we're going to see a chunk coming off it, Dave. Um, you have to bear in mind with Toaster as well. Um, obviously, this is this is a relatively new distance, um, so the, the track record has been established um, very recently uh, by Drive on Tip. But also, 
it's a fast track. Um, it's very, very Bowser affected. I was watching the trials the other day, and when the Bowser went round, um, I think it was New in Shadow who, who absolutely blitzed round uh, shortly after. So I think I think that is going to be a factor. I, I think um, Ryan's got it probably spot on. I think around the 2880, early 2880s uh, will be the track record by the end of the competition. Yeah, I mean, it'd be sort of looking at sort of five, six lengths to go any uh, lower mm. than that, which is, is some feat. Top Irish trained runner, Ryan. Um, unsurprisingly, Claire's Rocket and Prices Brandy head the market um, six to four joint fabs. But give us a little show of, of some of those sort of underneath those in the betting. Yeah, well, tell you, dog that I'd be very keen on um, was Tyra O'Shea. Now, we've sort of ducked him through it sort of in the last few weeks. Um, what What is quite notable about the market that we're offering in the top hours is we're actually paying five places a quarter. So it's five places if anybody's interested in having a bet with us each way terms, which is as good as you're going to find anywhere, in my opinion. Um, so basically, yeah, so with Tyra O'Shea, they're um, outside, outside of the top two, obviously. We've drive on tip 38 to one, Tyra O'Shea, I'd, sorry, Tower Shea at 8-1, Drive on Tip at 14s, Droopy's Wilbury at 16s, which definitely would gain a bit of interest, again, because of the five places. Gary Vo Bobby then next, 16-1, to one, and JT Jet next at 16-1. to one. Top stuff, and uh, I know you've priced up top bitch. We've just had news break that Droopy's Live is uh, has been withdrawn lame and is going to be a nominal, so I won't put you on the spot, Ryan. I know you have to jig that about. Empress Katie, I'm sure, probably shorten up a little bit was a six to four favourite. But a quick mention, you've priced up um, the top runner from all the big kennels as well. Yeah, look, basically just going back to the top bits market as well, I've seen a few firms knocking about they're only offering three places a quarter. We're actually offering four places a quarter in the top bits market. Uh, and look, with the added value of having Droopy's Live taken out of the equation, you know, there's definitely there's definitely going to be value to be found. Um, yeah, top markets, we have everything running from um, the McNairs, the Boons, the Cahills, the Wallace to Graham Holland, to Fraser Black, to Kevin Hutton, to Liam Dowling, to Paul Young, to Peter Cronin, to Peter Jan or to Mr. Janssen, sorry, Paul Hennessy, Buckley, Dartnell and Charlie Lister. Everything there, everything priced, wow. and everything a bit of value. Phil Punter's paradise with the specials this Absolutely. year. Absolutely, yeah, there, there is so much to, to get stuck into and to, to plough through, Dave. Um, uh, you know, and so little time now. It's, uh, this seems to have been an age coming uh, with the, the lack of the qualifier round. Suddenly, it's it, it's almost here, isn't it? And uh, yeah, really exciting. Very, very exciting. Right, it's that time for everyone's outright tips. Um, only stipulation, really, 50s or bigger about one of your selections. Um, we'll stick with you, Phil. Who are you going to put up for us? OK, well, I, I've give, I'm going to give you three, Dave. Um, from the top end of the market, I'm keeping the faith with, uh, with Buick. Uh, I think he is the class of, of the home contingent he's uh, as ryan said he, you know he's a 20 to 1 chance um for me i think that's much better value than, than maybe the bluebird and one or two others around him uh, and i see him as a, a, an ultimate competition dog so it'd be no surprise if he's still there uh, come july the first uh from from the next level of, of betting um i'm going to pull a throw a puppy in i've backed him at a bigger price but uh, that's fresh from the sesh uh, he's a 50 to 1 chance now um i've seen this dog learn his trade uh, at Wimbledon the last few weeks at Wimbledon he was a regular there uh, young Alfie Herbert trains him he's like a pup himself he's a real young lad in his 20s I know his dad his dad was an owner at Catford Neil he's very much part of the training team right so um, he knows his way around he's the dog a class then, yeah. class greyhound uh, and he's doing the times around there as well and he's a wide runner with early pace which is a factor uh, and at a bigger price, you could pick one of many, many, because there's so many good dogs there. I'm going to throw in Black Zack um, uh, for Richard Rees at 150 to 1. Uh, again, he's a dog who keeps qualifying. He's pacey, he's powerful, uh, and he steers a wide course. So I'm quite happy with that. OK, we've got a short one, a slightly bigger one, and a massive one at 150 go. to 1. Black Zack. Ian, talk to me. What do, what do we fancy? Well, two choices I'm going to make that are, are not too inspiring are Claire's Rocket and Price's Brandy. I think both of them, um, just with the news there, Drewby's Live, I think Price's Brandy, if he traps on Saturday night, I think he'll do 28.80 straight off the bat. I think Claire's Rocket might do something similar if he hits the lids. So I think the, the, the various prices available about those two dogs could look value in a round or two. And um, College Paradise, I'm all about College Paradise, as I've said. A dog that'll keep going through the derby, I think. He's a dog with pace, power and just a little bit of jealousy as well, just to, to make sure that he uh, has every reason to get there in front. And, uh, yeah, I think he's massive at 66, and that's uh, around that sort of price. I think he's a dog that's come into his own since he's gone to lean down at the back end of the year. His trials this year would suggest he's absolutely raring to go. And, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing him. 
just about redeemed yourself there, uh, Ian. It was almost shocking behaviour, tipping first and second favourite and then drawing a line <laughs> under it. But College Paradise, what price that one, Ryan? And give us some selections for yourself. Yeah, College Paradise, 66 to 1. Um, nice price there, obviously. But uh, I wouldn't be keen on his heat now, to be honest, especially drawn out in four. So, I mean, hence reason we are actually 66 to 1 best priced at. Um, and yourself, me, where, where are the, uh, the Rossborough fortune going? <laughs> Uh, right, first and foremost, don't know about fortune now, but um, look, first and foremost, I'll go straight off the bat with Tyra O'Shea. I think this is an incredibly fast greyhound. I don't think people across the water have seen the base of him. Uh, I hope to see the base of him, but I remember it was, it was in Harold's Cross one night, he'd done a 309 split, which is, which is exceptional. He'd done 2809, I think, in, in around the Puppy Derby. And he, everyone sort of was looking at themselves. At the time, he was called Coolio. And everyone's looking at themselves, this is a proper greyhound now. I'd say he's definitely improved since he, since um, Mr. Fahey's got his hands on him. Tell me you're uh, on at a big price, please, before the trolls take win at Toaster. I'm actually not. I'm oh, actually not. No. But I, I genuinely think there's juice in the price. Like, we're 25 to 1. There is 33s out there. I still think there's juice in that price. Anything else catch the eye at bigger prices? Uh, yeah. One dog, another dog caught me eye was at a big price, 150 to 1, Barricane Tommy. Um, and I'll tell you why. The, 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 the first night that he turned up, He'd be, he was taking on Sonic and he was taking on a dog called Street Lane and there was bombs for Street Lane that day as well but like this, this dog made them look ordinary enough Work from the front, yeah, very impressive Yeah, very, very impressive and look, he's only had one trial since he's coming in fresh, which is what I like uh, and you know, he's a young dog, he's opened a big improvement he, he's got little miles on the clock he looks around the right age to me at 151 if he jumps out, you know, over the weekend and does a run you're, you're straight away on a probably 33 to 1 shot Okay, an interesting one there. A bit of a price. I like Dorota's wild cat. I think Kevin Hutton thinks the absolute world of him. Uh, lightly race type. He's been kind of kept to toaster. Not definitely not seen the best of him. And one at a massive price. I think it's a little bit chasey. Um, keep qualifying. TJ's Apache at two hundred to one for that man Paul Young, who's got a knack of getting sort of unfancy dogs through to the latter stages. So two hundred to one with Paddy Power. That one, right, that about wraps it up, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the next sort of month or so um, of all the action. First two rounds and the final, of course, of the Greyhound Derby are live on Racing Post Greyhound TV. Third round onwards is uh, on Sky Sports. Listen out for other Racing Post postcasts. Please subscribe and review us on iTunes. Thanks for listening and be lucky. Check out Paddy's new VIPP club. Get a £10 free bet every week when you place five bets of £10 or more. Max £10 bonus per person per week excludes shops. Selected odds, conditions and exclusions apply. 18 plus,